Number one question I get asked all the time as a real estate agent is how much money do I need to buy an apartment in New York City? What is up everyone? My name is Sargis and I'm a licensed real estate agent based here in New York City. Welcome to another real estate video. My goal here is to provide you as much information as I can about New York City real estate. In today's video, we are going to discuss the costs associated with buying an apartment or a house in New York City. It's important for you to fully understand all the financial aspects of the transaction because the cost of buying is never just the down payment. It's not that simple. And if you're not prepared, this can put you in a tough financial situation. If you live in another state, the closing cost might be different for you. And because we all know that since New York City is one of the most expensive cities in the world, we are expecting to see higher than average numbers. The closing costs are different depending on what type of property you're buying. In my previous videos, I've covered two types of buildings in details that you see in New York City. Those are co-ops and condos. If you don't know the differences between a condo and a co-op, make sure to watch those videos linked in the description below. The third type of property that you can buy in New York City is a townhouse which can be a single family or two to four family house. There's also a fourth type of property in New York City residential market called a condop. As you might guess from the name, a condop is a hybrid that includes both condominium and cooperative ownership structures. There are not a lot of condops in New York City, but occasionally you might encounter with this type of building. In this video, we're going to take a look at the closing costs when buying a condo, co-op, or a house in New York City. Buying a home is a step-by-step -step process. If you go into this with the right mindset and have a great team of professionals help you follow the step-by-step -step system, your home buying journey will be fun and enjoyable process. In this video, we will focus on the costs in each step, not the steps itself. I have a separate video explaining how each step works and that video will also be linked in the description below. So just to recap, these are the buyer steps in New York City. Number one would be gather your team. This first of all includes your real estate agent, your real estate attorney, your mortgage broker, or your loan officer if you're financing. Step number two, determine your budget. Step number three would be home search. Number four, make an offer. Five, contract signing. Between having an accepted offer and a contract signing is when the inspection and the due diligence take place. Number six is finalizing your mortgage application if you're financing. This involves an appraisal and getting the commitment letter from the bank. Step number seven is purchase application, also known as board package, if you're buying a condo or a co-op. Number eight would be the board interview. This is only if you're buying a co-op. Step number nine is final walkthrough and the final step is closing. For those of you who are waiting for a quick answer to the question, how much money do I need to buy a home in New York City? The short answer is, it depends. There are a lot of factors that go into this, such as the location, price point, the type of property you're buying, and so on. In general, if you're buying a co-op apartment, you're looking anywhere between 1-2% to of the purchase price. Sometimes it can be even higher. 3-4% to if you're buying a condo, anywhere between 2-4% to for a house, and it can be as high as 6% if you're buying a new development. Before we dive in and discuss this any further, I have to say the disclaimer first and get that out of the way. This video is not intended to provide any tax, legal, financial, or accounting advice. This is for informational purposes only. Always consult with a licensed legal and accounting professional before considering any transaction. With that out of the way, let's start from your first expense that will occur between steps four and five when you have an accepted offer and before signing the contract. This is the time when you're going to do an inspection. Depending on what type of property you're buying, there are a lot of different types of inspections that you can do. Most of the time, you're going to start with a general inspection. When you're doing a general inspection, a professional inspector who's licensed with the state provides you a written report of the systems and components of the residential building, including heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical systems, appliances, structural components such as foundation, roof, walls, floors, ceilings, windows, doors, and a lot of other things. Those inspectors know what to look for and you'll receive a detailed report on every single small visible item that is wrong with the apartment or the house you're looking to buy. No home is perfect 
and there is always something that the inspection will discover. The goal of the inspection is first of all to uncover any hidden problems that can be a potential deal breaker for you. Also, you will know what are the things that need a repair right now and what other major repairs to expect in the future. If your inspector sees a major red flag in one of the components, they typically suggest you to get a specialist in that area to quote you for a repair or replacement cost. Depending on the area and the type of the property you're looking to buy, besides a general inspection, you might need to do other special types of inspections, such as foundation inspection, mold inspection, termite inspection, chimney inspection, roof inspection, lead-based paint inspection if the property was built before 1978 radon inspection, electrical inspection, HVAC inspection, asbestos inspection, plumbing inspection, sewer inspection, and so on. There are probably more. If you're buying a single family or two to four unit townhouse, depending on the type of the property, the inspection can cost anywhere between $750 all the way to $3,000 or more. Sometimes you might need to do a few types of special inspections, depending on the condition of the building. For co-ops, the corporation itself is responsible for big ticket items, such as the foundation, roof, plumbing, electric, and so on. You're responsible for your portion of those expenses only. If you're buying in a large co-op building that has a professional management company, most likely co-op will not allow any inspection in the boiler room, compactor room, mechanicals, roof, or elevators. The same is for condos. The condo association is responsible for all major structural elements, but you're allowed to inspect the unit itself. The inspection cost for an apartment can be anywhere between $500 to $1,500, depending on the type of the inspection, size of the apartment, and the inspection company. Your next expense will be your real estate attorney fees. In some states, the purchase contracts are handled by the real estate agents and the closings are done through escrow companies. But in New York City, it is typical and recommended that you have a real estate attorney to represent you in the transaction because the transactions and the due diligence process can be very complicated. I already have videos about the attorney due diligence process and materials, so I'm not going into the details here. In New York City, the real estate attorney fees are anywhere between $2,000 to $3,000 per transaction. Sometimes it can be even less or it can go as high as four or $5,000 depending on the attorney and the complexity of the transaction. So on average, two to $3,000 per transaction. And when it comes to the question, when do you pay your attorney fee? It depends on the attorney. Some of them just do the work and get their payment at the closing, and some of them might require a retainer, which is basically an upfront small payment for the lawyer to start the work and cover the expenses that will occur during the due diligence process. For example, a title search if you're buying a condo or a house, or a lien search if you're buying a co-op. Title search for condos and houses can cost anywhere between $300 to $700 and anywhere between $200 to $400 for a co-op lien search. It depends on the company, the property you're buying, and your lawyer's relationship with that company. You can shop around for a title company, but since in New York City you are represented by an attorney, they usually have a specific company that they work with and trust. Another due diligence expense can be when submitting a questionnaire to the managing agent if you're buying a condo or a co-op. After your attorney reviews all the due diligence materials, they might have additional questions and might submit a questionnaire to the managing agent of the building to find out the answers before reporting back to you. Depending on the building, this can cost anywhere between $50 to $250. The next expense that you're going to have is the appraisal fee. If you're buying all cash, this doesn't apply to you. Since the bank will hold your property as a collateral, they have to make sure that it's worth the money they're giving you. In case if you default on your mortgage, they can sell the property and get their money back. The appraisal can cost anywhere between $500 to $2,500, depending on the type of the property, size, location, and so on. It could be more or less, but generally that's the range that you can expect. Besides the appraisal, there are going to be other fees associated with your mortgage, such as your lender origination fee. This is a charge for processing your loan, 
which can vary a lot depending on the lender, the type of mortgage you're getting, your relationship with them, and many other factors. Next is what's called a lender questionnaire fee, which can range anywhere between $50 to $250 if you're buying a condo or a co-op. Each bank will have a specialized forms that need to be filled out for the buildings as well because the buildings also have to meet certain criteria in order for the lender to finance in that specific building. Some lenders might accept a general questionnaire provided by the management company, which sometimes can be a lower fee. But generally, that's the range that you can expect. Next is a credit report fee, which can range anywhere between $20 to $150. Also, bank attorney fee can range anywhere between $750 to $3,000. You might also need to pay points, which is simply a prepaid interest in exchange for a lower rate. Sometimes it makes sense to pay those points, but this depends on your specific situation and the type of loan that you're getting. Your lender will also require you to have a title insurance if you're buying a condo or a house. The rates can vary depending on the company, but generally you should see somewhere between 0.4 to 0.5% of the purchase price. So for an average two bedroom, two bathroom apartment with a purchase price of $1.2 million, your title insurance premium can be anywhere between $4,800 to $6,000. The exact amount varies depending on the company and your specific deal. Next, if you're buying a condo or a co-op, after you have a signed contract, you and your agent will start working on the board package, also known as purchase application. There are a few important differences between a condo and a co-op purchase application, but since I already have that covered in details in my other videos, we'll talk about the fees here. When your board package is ready and you have a commitment letter from your bank, usually the closing costs associated with the building needs to be paid when you submit your board package. The fees depend on the building, but these are the common ones that you will most likely see. Application fee, processing fee, credit report fee, move-in fee, administrative fee. There can also be a rush review fee ranging from $250 to $500 if you're in rush and need your application to be reviewed sooner. Most of the buildings will also require you to submit a move in deposit which you will get back when your move-in is complete and there is no damage to the building's common areas. This can be somewhere between $500 to $1,500. Again, every building is different, but this is generally the list of the fees that you see when looking to buy a condo or a co-op apartment. Your agent should be able to inform you about the exact closing costs associated with a building when you're considering to make an offer. Before closing, you also have to purchase a homeowner's insurance. Insurance premiums depend a lot of different factors such as the coverage limits, the value and the features of your home, location, past claim history, condition, and so on. I'm not going to give any number for homeowner's insurance since it varies a lot. It's always good to shop around and get a few quotes so you can compare them and get the best possible rate. One more type of closing cost you'll see when you get to the closing table would be your taxes. See, anytime a property is sold from one owner to another, there are taxes associated with the sale. And I'm sure it wouldn't be a big surprise for you if I tell you that New York City is amongst one of the highest in the country. So be prepared and budget accordingly to give the city and the state what they need. As a buyer, if you're financing the property, one of the biggest closing costs would be the mortgage recording tax. New York State imposes a tax on the privilege of recording a mortgage on a real property located within the state. And of course, in addition, New York City imposes local taxes on the mortgages that are recorded in New York City. How much you pay for the mortgage recording tax depends on your loan size, not the purchase price. In New York City, mortgage recording tax is 2.05% for the loan sizes under $500,000 and 2.175% for mortgage amounts above $500,000 for condos and one to three family houses. It is even higher for commercial properties. For residential transactions, your lender will typically pay 0.25% of the total mortgage recording tax, which means your effective mortgage recording tax in New York City as of today is 1.8% of the loan amount for the loans under $500,000 and 1.925% for loans $500,000 and more. 
This includes both New York State and New York City mortgage recording tax. And one important note here that the mortgage recording tax does not apply to co-ops because technically by definition mortgage is a loan secured by a real property and co-ops are not considered as a real property. Because you're buying shares in a corporation, this means that the co-op loans are secured by those shares and therefore they're not subject to the city and state mortgage recording taxes. So if you're buying an average two bedroom, two bathroom condo apartment with a purchase price of $1.2 million, assuming you're putting 20% down means you're financing $960,000. Since this is over $500,000, your effective mortgage recording tax will be $18,480. And of course, if you're paying all cash, no mortgage means no mortgage recording tax. The next buyer closing cost would be what's called a mention tax. If your purchase price is equal or greater than $1 million, you will be required to pay this tax. And in this case, co-ops are not exemptions and mention tax applies to co-ops as well. In New York City, mention tax ranges from 1% all the way to 3.9% for sales $25 million or more. In our last example, if you're buying this two bedroom, two bathroom apartment with a purchase price of $1.2 million, your mention tax would be $12,000. So if the purchase price is under $1 million, no mention tax. And now, if you think that's it, wait, we're not done yet. The buyer closing costs are the highest if you're buying a new development. And that's because if you're buying a new development, a lot of times the sponsor will pass those transfer taxes to the buyer. And the buyer will be responsible for paying New York State and New York City transfer taxes and the sponsor's attorney fees. However, this can be negotiable and depending on the market, sometimes the sponsor will agree to pay their transfer taxes to get the deal done or they might split it with the buyer. If it's a resale, typically the sellers are responsible for paying those taxes. New York State and New York City both charge separate transfer taxes. As of today, New York State transfer tax is 0.4% for sales under $3 million and 0.65% for sales $3 million and more. And of course, let's not forget about New York City transfer tax, which is 1% if the sales price is $500,000 and below, and 1.425% for sales above $500,000 for residential deals. Now going back to our example, if you're buying this two bedroom, two bathroom condo apartment in a new development with a purchase price of $1.2 million, and the sponsor is not willing to negotiate the transfer taxes, this means if you decide to move forward with your purchase, your New York State transfer tax would be $4,800 and New York City transfer tax would be $17,100, totaling $21,900 in transfer taxes. Plus, in this case, you will most likely pay the sponsor's attorney fees as well, which can be anywhere between $2,000 to $3,000. At the end, let's just add another $500 to $1,000 for random miscellaneous recording and filing fees. As you can see, that just saving for down payment is not enough to buy an apartment, especially in New York City. If you forget everything I said and click away to a more exciting prank video, just remember one thing. Buying or selling a home, especially in New York City, is not a do-it-yourself project. Some of those buyer closing costs are not negotiable. For example, the appraisal fee. You can't go and shop around for an appraisal. In some cases, maybe the bank will credit you the appraisal fee at the closing, but that's a different story. A lot of those closing costs can be negotiable and there can be ways to reduce those costs. That's why it is vital to have a great team of professionals who will help you go through the transaction step by step and help you understand all the financial aspects of buying a property in New York City. That's it for today's video. If you made it till the end and got some valuable information from this video, in return of me spending hours on planning, filming and editing those videos, just by clicking that like button and subscribing to the channel would be a huge favor. Thank you for watching, until next time.